Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at the swing state polling we've got from Emerson. This came out yesterday, the 19th, and as always, it's just one poll. Maybe you like this pollster, maybe you don't, but let's get into it. The headline is September 2024 swing state polls. Trump and Harris locked in tight presidential race, and this poll is taken the 15th through the 18th, and the sample size in each state used at least 868 likely voters. It mentioned Senate Democrats are outperforming Harris at the top of the ticket. We've seen that before. We'll get back to that in a minute. And the second paragraph mentions there has been marginal movement since their previous poll in August. So let's get into the states. We've got Arizona. Trump is up 1, 49 to 48. And they also have the timeline with their two previous polls. You can see back in July, Trump had an eight-point advantage. Then it was down to three last month. And now Trump went down a point. Harris went up. So it's a pure toss-up. In Georgia, Trump is up 3, 50 to 47. And going back to July, Trump had a four-point lead. Then last month, it flipped and Harris had a one-point lead, 49 to 48. So since then, Trump went up 2, Harris went down 2. Like with any poll, maybe last month was the outlier. Maybe this month is going to be the outlier. It all depends on how you want to look at it. But in Michigan, Harris is up two points, 49 to 47. Back in July, Trump was up three. Last month, it flipped and Harris went up three points. This month, Harris went down one, while Trump stayed the same. In Nevada, we've got a tied race at 48. Since last month, Harris went down one point, while Trump has stagnated. In North Carolina, Harris has a one-point advantage, 49 to 48. That's flipped from last month, where Trump had the one-point lead. Pennsylvania. It's another nail biter. Trump has a one point lead, 48 to 47. Back in July, Trump had a six point lead. Last month, it was tied at 48. So this time, Harris went down a point while Trump remained the same. And last, in Wisconsin, Trump up one point, 49 to 48. And going back to July and August, those numbers are completely flat. Nobody has gained or lost any support. Now, there's other polls out there. Some of those do have Harris up a couple more points. But this is all seven states from the same pollster all at once. And it's really all within the margin of error anyway. So if Trump is up one or two or Harris is up a couple of points, neither side should really feel comfortable about that. There's also going to be a small pool of undecided voters that could tip the state one way or the other in the final couple of weeks. Then it says voters were asked, regardless of who they support for president, which candidate they expect to be president after the 2024 election. A majority of voters in all swing states expect Harris over Trump to be president. That's by a 51 to 48 percent margin in Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Voters expect Harris over Trump in Nevada, 50 to 48 in Michigan, 52 to 47, and by a larger 53 to 46 in North Carolina. So that's close. North Carolina, for whatever reason, has the largest gap. But again, it's all a pure toss-up. Unless somebody opened up a prolonged, statistically significant advantage, I think the race is completely up in the air. Now let's also look at the U.S. Senate races. In Arizona, Ruben Gallego is up six points, 48 to Kerry Lake's 42. A big 10% undecided. Michigan, Alyssa Slotkin is up five, 47 to Mike Rogers, 42. Another another 11% are undecided. In Nevada, Jackie Rosen is up 7, 48 to Sam Brown's 41, 9% undecided. For North Carolina Governor, Josh Stein has an 8-point lead, 48 to Mark Robinson's 40, another 10% undecided. Pennsylvania has Bob Casey up 5, 47 to David McCormick's 42. And in Wisconsin, Tammy Baldwin is up 3 over Eric Hovde, 49 to 46, only 5% undecided in that one. So that's a familiar pattern where the Democrats are running 2, 3, 4, Four points ahead of Kamala Harris at the top of the ticket. And you could also look at it where Senate Republican candidates are running two, three, four points behind Donald Trump. So how much crossover support is there really going to be? It does seem unlikely that people would vote for Trump at the top of the ticket, but then vote for a Democrat for Senate. That's what the polling has consistently shown for a while, but you never know what's going to happen. Then we've got the top concerns for voters. In Arizona, the top issue is economy at 31%, followed by immigration at 23 In Georgia, it's economy at 50%, with threats to democracy, health care, and housing affordability all tying for second place at 9%. In Michigan, economy is at 51. Threats to democracy in second place at 10%. Nevada has economy at 39. Housing affordability is number two at 16. North Carolina, economy at 45. Then for whatever reason, there's only two other issues, housing affordability and immigration, tied for second place at 10% each. Pennsylvania has economy over a majority at 52%. Threats to democracy, number two at 12. And Wisconsin, economy economy is at 44. Threats to democracy, second place at 12. So the economy is still the dominant issue. And in some of the polling as to who would be better on that issue, Harris has closed the gap considerably, but generally Trump still has the advantage. Threats to democracy, unless it's defined specifically, that's kind of a vague issue, but I would guess that would benefit Harris. Abortion would seem like it's going to be the biggest issue for Harris, but in most of these states, that issue is down in single digits. Immigration is key in Arizona. That is one that should favor Trump. And in these other states, immigration is on here, but 
it's much lower this time, sometimes down in single digits. And that's pretty much it for this poll. Down below, you've got the methodology. And then at the very bottom, you can click full results. And that'll take you to a spreadsheet with the specific question wording. And you can take a look at the cross tabs. So you could spend a lot of time on there getting lost in the data. So this is just one poll. Some people like Emerson. Some people don't like him. They got all the states covered. It shows that it's a pure toss-up. It seems to be in line with what I'm expecting. But everything is really going to come down to the final few weeks. Given all the shakeups over the past couple of months, I'm not really too interested in what's happening in September or even early October. October at this point. I know whichever side is in the lead, there's going to be a case to be made to not trust the polls. If your candidate is ahead, you don't really need to make up any excuses. When Harris is ahead, Republicans can easily say that Trump has been seriously underestimated in 16 and 20. Everybody said he had no chance at 16, and this time he's polling better in many of the swing states than he did in 2020, and that's the year that he lost. On the other side, if Harris is trailing in any of the polls, Democrats will come back and say that they underestimated Democrats in 2022. Abortion is a big motivator, and pollsters are are not picking that up. And they've also adjusted for their previous misses in 16 and 20. There's always going to be something each side can point to to have some level of hope. And that's what I expect. I don't think either side is going to come out and say, yeah, we're going to lose this thing. I think there are a lot of question marks as to how accurate the polling is going to be this time. Trump is a total wild card. People love him. They hate him. Voters are still getting to know Harris. She was definitely unpopular not that long ago. We don't know if she's going to sink in the final few weeks or if she's going to go even higher. Then we don't know who's actually going to turn out on election day. You can look at absentee ballot requests and turns all you'd like, and you can look at polling data all you'd like. But the final results are unknown, but I would expect them to be close either way. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about these Emerson polls? Do you think it's a pure toss-up and Trump is ahead in some and Harris is ahead in others? Or do you think they've got it wrong and Trump is underestimated? Or do you think that Harris is underestimated? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.